Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to talk about Bitcoin's marketing team, how we're all part of Bitcoin's decentralized marketing team. And before we begin, I wanna give a shout out to Ledin. Ledin is one of my sponsors. It's the best place to earn a yield on your Bitcoin or borrow against your Bitcoin and get dollars or, or any type of uh, uh, fiat asset you'd like. Um, okay, now let's go ahead and hop into the uh, video of the day. So uh, with this video, I'm gonna cover Bitcoin's marketing team and cover a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of how I feel about some recent events. Um, this is written first in the held report. Uh, you can find the link to subscribe below. This comes out on Thursdays and then my YouTube video comes out on Sundays. So, okay, let's go ahead and hop on in here. Um, yesterday, Natalie Brunel, she's a uh, crypto uh, or like a Bitcoin uh, tw a Twitter personality and she's gone on a bunch of different podcasts. She's kind of like a kind of like up and coming um, kind of Bitcoin evangelist. She got attacked because she created a paid course for women to learn more about Bitcoin. And there were a lot of reasons why people attacked it. Uh, one was the cost uh, and a few others were around like, oh, it's targeted to women. And some people thought that was demeaning. Um, and, you know, I, while I can't vouch for the quality of the course um, or if it's worth the cost, I found the response like a little bit annoying, a little bit troubling because it was very discouraging to see this sort of behavior from Bitcoiners as it... Um, discourages the creation of content and people talking about Bitcoin and people creating videos and podcasts, etc. Um, at the core of this of, of today's lesson is that Bitcoin is a, has a decentralized marketing team and it's comprised of all of us. When you talk to your family and friends about Bitcoin, that's called word of mouth marketing. <laughs> that's you are marketing Bitcoin to other people. And, you know, for example, you're watching this video on YouTube. I'm marketing Bitcoin on YouTube. You know, so each one of us play a role to advocate for Bitcoin and uh, help it grow in existence. And so we're all part of this A-B test, this grand experiment where we iterate with messaging. For example, I have a certain type of way that I explain Bitcoin and other people talk about Bitcoin in other ways. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just like which message has the best fit for the audience. And that's why it's like a big A-B test experiment. Um, and so, you know, ultimately there's some confusion, I think, in the, in, in, on Twitter and other places around like what marketing is and why Bitcoiners should care about that. So. Why does marketing matter? Well, every product, um, service, protocol, government, religion, etc., it requires a solution to be found by its customer segments. So, for example, Bitcoin solves wealth preservation and censorship. Religion solves death and life operating structure. Apple solves easy to use computers, makes makes using computers easy and makes your life easy with, when you need to use a computer. And then states solve Security, for example, the protection from a government that a government gives you to protect you from other countries. Following me? So like with this, you know, Bitcoin, people need to market Bitcoin to hear about it. If no one talks about Bitcoin, if no one ever told their family and friends about it, no one ever created podcasts about it, then none of us would be here, right? I heard about it from people before me and on the Bitcoin Talk forums and whatnot. And so it's critical that we really tap into this mindset of like, how do we get the message of Bitcoin everywhere? Um, you know, whether that be YouTube, Twitter, and that's why I started a YouTube channel is I was predominantly on Twitter and I wasn't on YouTube as often as I should be. And YouTube is a really big channel to reach a ton of people, hence why you're listening to this. And so that's why I created a YouTube channel, Facebook, newsletters, etc. Uh, Breedlove has a great quote here. He says, we hodl revolutionaries care, have to care about the direction that we move in the world. Our job, um, our job is to trumpet the tool of freedom, Bitcoin, to everyone, everywhere, every realm. So I totally agree with the sentiment. we got to talk about Bitcoin everywhere, not just on social channels that are comfortable to us, like Twitter. And so marketing is about conveying the solution uh, to the target customer at the right time with the right message to convince them to become a customer. So, for example, why is Bitcoin valuable to you? And so from a clinical perspective, you know, humans are sort of like taking in visual and audio data points, right? Like you're watching a video, you're watching this video, or you're reading a book, or you're listening to a podcast. And then that changes you, that changes your behavior. And you respond by buying or not buying Bitcoin, subscribing to this, uh, this YouTube channel, uh, sharing the content, etc. And so, you know, ultimately, when you're not marketing something well, um, it's, you're not providing the right message. Um, and that's where I think what's kind of interesting with Bitcoin's big decentralization narrative experiment is that people want to, you know, some people market Bitcoin as family, God, and Bitcoin. That's cool. Some people are going to like that message. Some want to market Bitcoin as, you know, futurist technology, fairness, equality. Cool. That's awesome as well. Some people are going to like that message. There is no perfect message for everyone. 
each one of us iterates and creates messaging for our target audience. And so, you know, ultimately like follower counts and engagement signal to the creator, myself and others, if they have content market fit. Is my content resonating with my audience? Do they like this? Does, does this make sense to them? Are they learning about Bitcoin? Uh, you know, and for example, what's kind of funny is some Bitcoiners require you to adhere to a very stringent set of rules that are, you know, sort of purity rules. And, you know, for example, like I think Peter McCormick has great content. He's a really good Bitcoiner. And some people don't like him because he doesn't eat steak every day or he doesn't have, you know, the same intense science or medical conversations. He doesn't agree with all the Bitcoiners. He's trying to make Bitcoin appeal to a larger audience and a, a bigger narrative. I would say like we're somewhat similar in that regard. I'm trying to get new people into Bitcoin. If you're a Bitcoiner, you probably know a lot about, about what I've already what I've taught, you know, what I'm talking about on all my other podcasts, YouTube channels, etc. I really want to help capture the no coiners and bring them into Bitcoin. And so, uh, you know, with that, Peter is compensated well. And and here, you know, there's a link to how much he makes. He makes, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. And uh, some Bitcoiners don't like that. They think that that's dirty or bad or something, <laughs> which is so bizarre because Bitcoin is about being is about having a pure free market. Like people are free to do whatever they'd like. So the idea that like, oh, he's making money from this is like, you know, stealing from Bitcoiners or he's trying to take advantage of Bitcoiners is absolutely silly. I mean, there's a lot of prominent Bitcoiners who have books and they have ads in their podcast or they have uh, conferences that they run or they, you know, they uh, they have paid dinners. Who cares? It's if people want to buy it, it's a subjective thing to do. I, some people may find it valuable, some don't. Um, and so what's interesting when we look at, you know, and so, that, yeah, that, that point, I think, is really I want to bring home, like making money talking about Bitcoin isn't a bad thing. And, and a lot of people think it's there's this weird sect of the Bitcoin community. Uh, that thinks that, that it's a bad thing. Um, and then, you know, when we look at narrative market fit, so like what narratives are working, there's a couple ways to observe this. One is follower count and one is engagement. And so through Social Blade Analytics, which anyone can go do this on their computer or cell phone, you can go check at follower growth. And the red line here is me. And we've got uh, John Carvalho, which is purple, and Vinny Lingham, which is blue. As we can see, no one is really caring about their content because with Vinny, for example, we see this this follower growth basically stagnate and decline for um, you know almost a year and a half. And so I think that's representative of narrative market fit. Whatever message he's propagating, people don't want to hear. Uh, same with John Carvalho. And so for whichever re reason, which I hypothesize might be around like Bitcoin Cash or uh, sort of tone and voice, um, whatever reason, we can just see it with the data here that you know very few people are, are resonating with that message. Before we begin, I want to give a shout out to Choice, one of my sponsors. As most of you know, when you hodl, you don't have to pay taxes. But what if I told you that you could hodl and when you eventually sell your Bitcoin, you wouldn't have to pay any taxes then? Well, I didn't think that was possible until I found a Choice IRA. Choice is the best retirement account to set up for Bitcoiners that lets you buy and hold Bitcoin in stocks without paying a dime to the government. And how does that work? Choice is an IRA. They have IRAs and Roth IRAs, which means it's a special type of retirement account where you don't pay taxes if you hodl until a certain age, along with some other stipulations. And the best part, you can self-custody your Bitcoin with Choice, which means that you don't have to trust Choice or anyone else with your Bitcoin or your private keys. It's the perfect retirement solution for Bitcoiners. The best time to start stacking sats was 11 years ago. The second best time is today. Search stack sats in the App Store or choiceapp.io slash held. Link is included in the description below. Go get, check it out right now. A um, couple other points I want to touch on just because people, I think, are really confused about marketing. So some of the basics, this is a marketing funnel. And what this means is that you're taking a, kind of a broad-based awareness. So people have heard about Bitcoin and taking that. And, and the ultimate objective here of all Bitcoin content folks are to take them all the way through the funnel and get them to the last stage. So those stages are awareness. I've heard about Bitcoin. Consideration. I think Bitcoin might have solved a problem for me. Conversion. I'm going to buy Bitcoin. And loyalty. HODL. And then advocacy. They've become Bitcoin marketers now. And so each Bitcoin marketer is sort of playing a, and each, you know, we're all part of this marketing team. We're each trying to help people get through different stages or the, all through the, all the stages. Um, you know, and so when people become aware of Bitcoin and start to consider it as a new money, it requires a complete restructuring of their models, you know, and, you know, this is people's relationship with their government, which they've trusted completely. And so I think there's a really good quote from Inception. And here's a clip below, which <clears throat> I'll include in the, in the links. Um, he says, you need to start with the simplest version of the idea to grow, 
naturally in the subject's minds, you have to start with the most absolute basic. And so in the show, he talks about the relationship between the son and the father. And that's the idea they're going to, they're going to attack that idea to incept it, to convince this son to break up his father's empire when his father dies. And so with Bitcoin, we have to attack the core root of people's relationship with their money and their government. And then the other stages, conversion through advocacy. So, you know, Bitcoin largely sort of, uh, most of its growth is through speculation. As the price goes up, people become more aware of it and want to buy in anticipation of the price going higher. So people come for the speculation and stay for the sound money. Um, some Bitcoiners argue that Bitcoin will dominate because it is the hardest money ever known. It forces people to like educate and understand. I think that's kind of bullshit. Uh, most came for speculation and the ones who stayed around or hodled read content that convinced them that Bitcoin is going to be this new sound money. They don't automatically get it. And so while we could say Bitcoin could win solely based off of its value props, people naturally understand a new concept when it's easily explained or in, explained in a way that makes sense to them. This is why we saw such a rise in objectively poor but easily explained uh, ideas in 2014 through 2018, like uh, this coin being cheap, the unit bias problem, or um, Bitcoin is slow or Bitcoin is wasteful. And ultimately, price ceilings are set by the speculators, but the floor is by the hodlers. We want to con convince those people who bought Bitcoin to stick around and, and be loyal to Bitcoin. And through content, through great content, we help them understand why Bitcoin is valuable and why they want to stick around. So, uh, you know, it, it's funny because a lot of people think of Bitcoin as this <laughs> really, really crazy complex idea. And a lot of us have, you know, gone down the rabbit hole. Looking back, it seems kind of easy, but actually approaching it was really, really difficult, right? Like this was really confusing. Um, you know, we really want to like take this message and distill it and make it simple. And I applaud all the content creators, Natalie and others who are trying to do that. And that's not an easy task. I mean, I've been doing this for three years, blog post, YouTube channel, newsletters. Do you know, it's hard to write a newsletter every single week. It's hard to post a tweet, which doesn't sound like a lot of work every single day for three years. Um, so for me, like, you know, what does good marketing look like? Well, many Bitcoiners feel that good marketers are kind of sleazy salesman types. And that's what really annoys me about this kind of recent, um, kind of recent backlash. And they, they feel like it's a hack when you get engagement, but you're simply just capturing attention. And that's increasingly harder to get where people have all these distractions. And if this uh, Bitcoiner who creates content can help people learn about Bitcoin, what's wrong with that? Um, and if, if certain type of marketing leads to more people becoming Bitcoiners, then inherently it is good quality. There is no doubt about it. It's an objective thing. So, you know, I, I think there's a lot of complexity where like a lot of Bitcoiners like to get into the weeds. This is awesome. And you might be trying to convert someone further down the funnel. We're all part of this decentralized marketing team trying to get folks from awareness all the way through to loyalty and advocacy. Um, you know, for example, you can think of like Anthony Pompliano or Peter McCormick as top of the funnel or maybe myself. And then you've got Jameson Lott, BitMEX Research, Matt O'Dell, a little bit further down the funnel. And this is fine. I, I don't think this is bad or good. It's, we're all part of the same team just trying to get people further and further down the rabbit hole. And so, um, you know, really want to kind of hammer this point home. It, now, this chart was not made by me, and these are kind of just made up numbers. But this gives you an idea of sort of like that, that Bitcoin rabbit hole is kind of like a funnel in a way. Um, so wrap up here. Bitcoin is decentralized. There's no single point. Uh, there's no single entity that can speak on behalf of it. Um, we are all part of Bitcoin's marketing machine. We're all part of this decentralized A-B testing of different narratives. We should be encouraging people who want to stand up and talk about Bitcoin, not bicker about them having a paid course or paid dinner or conference. Who cares? If people want to buy that, they want to buy that. If they don't, they don't. Hope you enjoyed the conversation today. Cheers.